Hi there, I'm Sean from ARRI and this is a video about the Alexa Mini LF ready to shoot set. So the ready to shoot set has been the most popular way for people to buy into an Alexa Mini LF and I'm going to now take you through all the little bits and pieces that come with it kind of explaining why we designed some of them the way that we did and show you how to put it together. So to start off we're going to talk about the compact bridge plate. So the compact bridge plate replaces four separate parts that you needed for an Alexa Mini um, to do the one job that this guy does. So the compact bridge plate is basically two pieces. There's a little lock here on the top half, which is a sliding top half, which can come off, and the bottom half. Now the bottom half is an integrated shoulder pad and bridge plate. Um, there are two options depending on what studio spaced rails you want. So this would be for 19mm, so it's the CBP1, and then the CBP2 offers 15mm studio rail support. Um, it has a quick release two stage locking lever which I'll talk about in a second um, and the newer versions have little rod clamps here and also a hollowed out section and a newer shoulder pad which allows rails to slide all the way through now. So the CVPs have gone through a couple of iterations um, but all of course the new cameras come with the latest version. So to start assembling the camera we're going to take the top half and we're going to take the Mini LF. We're going to unscrew the Wi-Fi antenna just so that we can lay the camera down flat on its top. And we're going to flip it over like so. Take the bottom half of our compact bridge plate as well as the 3mm Allen key that comes with all of the sets that we sell. And just screw this in. Now it's important to note you don't need to over tighten these screws. Um, they will lock, they will be secure. I just kind of go for a little finger tight feel with maybe a little nip at the end there to tighten things up. Great. So now I'm going to lay the camera on its side and we're going to take the rear accessory bracket. Now there are a couple of ways you could mount this. Um, this is my preferred option, I think it's easier. But I just wanted to point out that this also works if you have a MAP2 on the bottom. Um, and to do that you just have to pull out this screw here um, and then put it in from the top. So it comes from the bottom up on the compact bridge plate and from the top down on the MAP2. So now that I have this, I can slide the bridge plate in here and if I turn it around and do that again you'll see that there's a hole here which this screw will go into and there's a little channel uh, which kind of holds everything together and once you have it lined up, the screw there we go, will go in and we can take the camera into its rightful position. I can put the Wi-Fi antenna back on now because that won't hit the ground anymore if the camera is upside down with the top plate on. Now the top plate is the new MAP 2A, so it's very similar to the MAP 2 that came with all the minis that we ever sold. Um, a couple of improvements, so we put a rod clamp now on either side, which has meant that you can run rods, or single rods, um, in here where it was kind of difficult with the MAP 2 with the one rod clamp. And we've also made the clamping jaw inside quite a bit wider. Um, there were some times where if you over tighten the MAP 2 clamps, you might actually dent uh, lightweight rods, so we've made it wider to distribute the clamping force over a larger surface area and hopefully stop the dent. Um, so that goes on the top of the camera. Again, four 3mm Allen key screw holes, like so. And then there are two additional ones that lock the RAB1 into the MAP2. So they're just here. There's a little diagram here which points in the, like a weird direction. So it's saying unlock is in a clockwise fashion, which would be wrong normally, um, but because these screws are drawing from under the MAP2 up into it, um, it's actually lefty, tidy, righty, loosey, um, if you like my little turn of phrase there. So we can draw these up through the bottom of the MAP2 now and then lock them off. And then this is like a really rigid cage setup here, um, which is kind of, you know, usable in its barest form. So from here, I'm going to slip the compact bridge plate into the bottom. Um, we can do that from the front or the back. I'm just going to do it from the front, like so. And then, of course, our little lock lever over here. And then I'm going to grab our dovetail plate, which is a lot lighter than the old ones, which is nice. So this is the new version of our dovetail, which has been around for, you know, probably 50 years or more. Um, some slight improvements, obviously we've taken out a lot of material here which actually makes the plate stiffer than the old ones because there are more edges and we've put a safety release on both ends and then given you a little garage here for these safety stop screws which you can screw in if you wanted to have it as like a unidirectional um, or single directional uh, plate. So I'm going to slide, or I'm not going to slide 
the compact ridge plate onto the dovetail because that's what's different. Um, you no longer have to slide in from the back, you can, um, but the benefit with a compact bridge plate is it has this nifty little quick release system where I can go straight on top of the dovetail and then release and then lock. So to take you through that, um, I'll put it this way, hopefully you guys can see. So there is a little um, diagram in here which says lock, balance and release. So naturally the plate wants to sit in its kind of balance position which will allow us to slide the compact bridge plate along the dovetail for balance. Um, lock is of course the front like with normal bridge plates but there's a little two stage release here. So um, if I pull out this little tab on the lever and push it all the way back, that's when I can drop it straight on to the dovetail and the same process of taking it off. Now, I would recommend that um, you do it kind of slowly for the first couple of times. You want to really make sure that it sits down square and that you hold the lever back while you're putting it onto the dovetail. Um, otherwise, you'll end up just jamming the, the uh, bridge plate into the dovetail here and could cause some scratches and stuff. So make sure that when you're coming on, you also pull the lever back and go straight onto the dovetail. And then release, it'll jump to the balance position so we can slide it and then push to the front to lock. So next step is the top handle. This is the same top handle from the Mini, the CCH2. There are four positions you can put it in up here. I'm just going to go for the vanilla standard positioning, if you like. Again, four screws, as with most of the accessories. And we're away. Next stop. Side brackets. So there are two side brackets which come with the ready-to-shoot sets, and they're different. This is the new guy. This is the MSB3, which goes this way. And you can see that it kind of comes further out towards the front of the camera than the normal ones do. And so that is to clear the card bay. So that's really the only difference with the uh, body on the Mini LF to the Mini, is that there's this new card bay for the compact drives, which means it's a little bit bigger on the left-hand side than the Mini. So while you can use most of the Mini accessories on here, um, the side bracket won't work, and the new one. Um, at least on the left side. The right side of the camera is identical. Um, and we can do this like so. Again, you have a rosette here for handles or other brackets, um, a whole bunch of 3 8, 3 8 inch holes. And there are these other little holes on the edges here, which you can mount, let's say, a rod bracket on here, an RMB3, um, which is quite nifty. MSB2 for the right side. So this came out during the Mini LF's run. Sorry, during the uh, Alexa Mini's time in the market, um, and it just gives us a nice 19mm rod clamp at the top, or we could flip it and put it on the bottom um, if you like. I find this really handy for uh, gimbal work because it gives you a nice thick 19mm rod that's really close um, to the camera body, so if you're running a very lightweight package, it's, it's a good place to put a rod. Um, speaking of rods, I will go through some accessories which don't come with a ready-to-shoot set, but I, I really recommend you guys go out and grab a couple of these. These are our new lightweight uh, single rods, so we have a 90mm one or a 150mm one. Um, if I wasn't Australian, I could tell you what that is in inches. I'm sorry, you'll have to Google it. Um, but you can put those when I have the clamp undone uh, in the top there, which is cool. All right, side brackets are done. Time to look at some power options, maybe. So all of the ready-to-shoot sets come with a power splitting box. So this box has been around for a little while. Honestly, they've been really robust and reliable. Um, I really like this plate. It has a whole heap of power output options. So you get um, three two-pin Limos, two Fisher RS plugs, a Horozi, and two D-taps, which are these fun Bebop twist taps, which you can put in both ways um, while it not changing the polarity, which is quite nifty. The switch on the side here, um, some people think it's for the camera. It's not. It just controls the accessory power outputs, um, so you don't need to worry about that. To mount this to the system, I need to put a clamp on. So we have a new clamp for the RAB1, the rear accessory bracket. This is the RAB1 clamp 2, because it's the second version. You'll notice around here as well, um, we have a whole bunch of different screws that are in the plate, M4, M3, and a quarter inch. So the ones that I need for the power splitting box are the quarter inch, so I've got to take these out. It's just like a little garage where we store them, but you might need the other screws if you're running a third-party battery plate. So we take them out, and then they go in these holes here. If you're not using the other screws, I do recommend that you leave them inside the garage, because otherwise you can't um, close the clamp properly sometimes. Um, we had a few customers who um, weren't sure why their clamp wasn't secure. Now, 
you can mount this in several places. I think the best place is just in the middle here. Um, again, you can screw in these two little screws. And the way I remember which way it goes is just because you have the button here, the sticky outy bit, and also the clamp lever on the same side. So we'll just make sure that's tight. Okay. Now we have two positions we can put it in. So the main position, of course, is on the back, and it's like the compact bridge plate. It's a two-piece lever, so we come up and then we have a lock. We have a little safety step, which you pull out this little guy and all the way down, so I can come straight onto the back. I don't need to slide it in from the top, and then pull the lever up and lock. Um, the other way that you can run the battery plate, which I think is quite nifty, um, is up the top. So this is kind of reminiscent of a film mag, perhaps, um, but it also means that you have a handle at the back now um, and you can attach a more ergonomic handle into this if you like, so like a CTH-1 um, would be really good. Of course, there are lots of options on the market. Um, it also makes the whole package a bit shorter, which can be good if you want a handhold kind of up in your shoulder here or you're on an easy rig, um, so that's a nice little option. And if you are on an easy rig, it makes um, a kind of a closed loop here with the handle to stop the little grabber from escaping. So again, we've got that two position switch. And I can leave this on the back. Now, when you're plugging this in, it's just the standard Mini Amira and Mini LF power plug. And then there is a socket here for the power cable, which also comes with the ready to shoot set. So that's just a um, Mini LF 8 pin Limo plug to a 3 pin XLR for 24 volt block batteries. Of course, you can run 10 and a half to 34 volts into the camera and into the power splitting box. Um, it doesn't care. Um, it's nice like that. All right, so probably the last little spot um, or thing to do here is the viewfinder bracket. So this is the same viewfinder bracket that we have um, had for quite a while now. Um, everyone's really used to it. It supports the VEBs, those uh, viewfinder extension brackets. And we've made a slight change. We've made these knobs bigger so they're easier to hold, particularly if you're holding gloves or something like that. Um, viewfinder. So our fantastic new viewfinder. will slide in like so. And then we have two options of viewfinder cables. Both of them come with the ready to shoot set. As you can see, one of them is a bit longer. So that's a 35 centimeter and a 50 centimeter or 12 or 18 inches. Um, and then it goes in here. And then this is my favorite part of the camera system is this really easy to use viewfinder cable socket now. Um, there's no keyway. You can actually turn the cable inside the uh, socket here. It's just one pin that carries power and data, um, which is pretty cool called Coax Express or Coexpress. Um, last little stop. Now this is kind of where the big change comes in with this set of accessories to what some camera assistants might be used to. And you'll notice that we don't actually have lightweight 15 uh, support rails here. So that was for a reason. And lightweight 15 support, um, while useful in some situations, when you're using lens motors, um, it's, they're not great. The 19mm rails that we have, which are much lighter now, um, give you a much uh, larger diameter rod, so therefore more clamping force. So you'll, if you use 19mm rods and a short one maybe in the front here in this RMB, you'll find that your lens motors won't jump off as much. Um, so they'll be sitting there nice and tight. I'm using the longer one here because even though the ready to shoot set comes with the LPL to PL adapter, I'm just a fan of signature primes and I have one over here. So we can run this. And this, this setup whoop, has really been designed for people who use clamp-on map boxes and for those who use lens motors, which we're finding is just you know nearly every production that's going on now. Um, so now we have the clamp-on map box on the front, the LMB 4x5, um, and we have all this space for running lens motors, and I can still adjust the balance of the whole package without having to take my motor off and adjust it, which is great. You could also, of course, run it out of the top here on the MSP2, um, and this rod mounting block here has um, four different spots that it can go in. And if you do really want to use 15mm lightweight rods, um, we have this little bracket available. It doesn't come with a ready to shoot set. It is the lightweight bracket for CBP. And that goes on the front here, like so. So I'd pull the lens off to screw it on. And then you get some nice little 
uh, 50 mil lightweight rods, which is fine for running a mechanical follow focus or if you want to have a rail mounted map box because you're jumping around a lot or whatever it is. Um, it isn't great for running iris motors um, because the block ends up starting quite a bit further forward. But again, that's because this system was designed to run with these beautiful 19 mil rods or you could use 15 if you really need to, a single 15 here with a little reduction insert. So the only two other things that come with the ready to shoot set are of course two cards in these nice little plastic cases and if you bought a set of six it would also come inside a foam cutout that you can put straight into a pelican case so you can have six cards in one box. So that kind of brings us to the end of the Mini LF um, ready to shoot set build video. I hope you guys enjoyed that um, but I'm not finished. I have more fast Australian words to throw at you and that is I wanted to talk about a couple of extra bits which work really well with this setup. So. This is the stabilizer plate. So this guy will work in a Trinity, in a uh, an Maxima, in the SRH3, the dovetail on the bottom, and then this dovetail at the top replaces the compact bridge plate. But you'll notice that it also has a bunch of quarter inch and three eighth inch holes on the bottom here. So most people use this as a Steadicam or Artemis plate, um, which is really handy because you can just slide off the whole compact bridge plate and slide the camera straight onto the steady cam. It's really quick. Um, so I would recommend one of those. If you're using a Ronin 2, our friends at Ignite Digi have made this plate for us, which you can buy through your normal ARRI dealer. Um, so that adapts the compact bridge plate to the Ronin. Um, we have the BAP2A. So the BAP2, so battery adapter plate 2, uh, was around for the Alexa Mini, but this is the new version which now supports the power splitting box, um, which is great because the old one you had to use the smaller battery plates, but now you can have the one battery plate sticking on the side of the camera. Um, you might like to buy a handle extension block. These are super popular um, for us. They kind of go with every Mini LF kit, and that would, of course, go on the back here or on the front, which is great, again, for easy rig balance and all that kind of stuff. Probably my favorite accessory for the system, apart from the stabilizer plate, um, is this guy. Now this is the side accessory bracket, SAB1. So it came out a little while ago as well. But what you can do is replace the MSB2 uh, with this and then put the MSB over the top. So while the editor fast forwards this, I'll put it on. All right, so you can see here that I've put the SAB2 underneath the MSB1. Um, so we can still get that rod mount. Of course, you don't have to do that, but it's quite nice. And then this now gives us a place which I find really useful for putting video transmitters. And speaking of which, we have this new bracket. So this is the ARRI video transmitter bracket. Um, it will work with both our transmitters as well as other transmitters like Teradex. And it comes with a bunch of different screws which will work to stop those uh, transmitters rotating because they have a bunch of screw holes on the bottom. So this is our little transmitter. And you can see here that it mounts it really securely, simply out of the way. I'd probably flip this the other way so I can get a short BNC going. But um, yeah, really nice and small. The antennas are still clearing uh, the whole system so the range is not going to be affected. Um, and it's you know quite easy also with the big thumb screw here to pull it off very quickly. So that's one I'd check out. I think that's about it. Thank you so much for, guy for watching, guys. I uh, really appreciate it. We're hoping to have more videos come out over the next few weeks while we're all stuck uh, inside, not visiting customers. But um, yeah, please leave some comments and uh, questions in the description below or in the comment section below. That would be great. We'd love to hear from you. And um, yeah, thanks so much. I've been Sean from Ari. Cheers.